Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's Living Life. I want to start off by sharing a song uh, that I was reminded of as I was preparing for today's devotional. And I actually couldn't remember the name, and I had to start typing in the first line, and then lo and behold, Google uh, kind of auto-completed um, using the first line because that's how everyone else uh, looked for it. And if, when I re read the lyrics, you'll understand why. It's a very fun song uh, that came out of Hillsong, uh, Australia, um, quite a few years ago, I think late 90s, maybe even the mid 90s. Uh, but the, the lyrics and the content will be quite pertinent for today, as you will see. So let me read for you a little bit. Uh, the verse says, I say on Sunday how much I want revival, but then on Monday, I can't even find my Bible. Where's the power, the power of the cross in my life? I'm sick of playing the game of religion. I'm tired of losing my reason for living. Where's the power, the power of the cross in my life? I'm not content just to walk through my life, giving in to the lies, walking in compromises. Now, and then it moves on to the chorus, which I won't read. And the song is actually called Believe. And, uh, you know, as a, as a part of today, today's devotion, I encourage you to look it up on YouTube, Believe Hillsong, and listen to this song. And uh, the thing is that as we talk and read about Jesus being the Lord of the Sabbath, no matter how wrong we know it is, uh, it's so easy for us to fall into the trap of playing the Sunday game. So let's read uh, the passage and then we'll continue. Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to pick some heads of grain, rub them in their hands, and eat the kernels. Some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he went into the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with the shriveled hand, Get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them all and then said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. But they were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. So today's passage covers the second and third controversy uh, that is a part of three, uh, a series of uh, three controversies uh, that started yesterday. The first one yesterday was about fasting. And then today we have two uh, kind of mini episodes talking about uh, the Sabbath or the controversy surrounding Sabbath and Jesus's position and his teaching on it uh, in reflection to the Pharisees' legalism. And uh, basically we see the Pharisees uh, following around uh, following Jesus around and waiting to judge Jesus to wait for him because because I mean you know now we read uh, the Bible as you know this is Jesus the Christ who will come to save the world but for them uh, they didn't know and they couldn't no, they wouldn't accept who Jesus really was. And so they're just following Jesus around and the picture is actually quite silly. It's almost like you know, all these old men in their robes and their beard, spying on Jesus, following them around. And if you watch some of the movies, uh, you know, Jesus movies, you see the Pharisees riding around on donkeys, right? Mini small donkeys. And I don't know, just imagine that. These people following Jesus around, waiting to pounce on any mistake that Jesus makes. And the first one is uh, they're watching and following Jesus 
and the, and the disciples as they walk through a grain field. And the second is Jesus teaching at a synagogue. And the second one, you know, being kind of more norm, normal. And the Pharisees are basically being religious police. And like the real police, they believe they have authority. And in this case, their authority comes from the law. And this word comes out very often. And the lawfulness or the unlawfulness of something and of the situation is repeated several times. In verse 2, it says, and the Pharisees asked Jesus, why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Uh, and then in verse 4, Jesus addresses uh, this issue head on uh, when he tells of the story of David, uh, whom uh, the Pharisees you know, actually love and, and respect very much. And the little anecdote comes from 1 Samuel chapter 21 to 22. And then in verse 9, later on, it also, uh, Jesus says, um, I ask you, which is lawful? on the Sabbath, to do good or evil, to save life or to destroy life, right? And so um, the core teaching today uh, that is, to uh, is the title or the subheading that I'm sure you have in your Bible that Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. It says in verse 5, this is the core teaching, that the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. And it has uh, two parts, I think. Jesus being uh, the Lord of the Sabbath, and then the Pharisees' rejection of Jesus as the Lord of the Sabbath. So it's this dual teaching that Jesus is trying to get across and that we can learn from today. Now, the word Sabbath is actually a very loaded term, uh, which can um, place too much emphasis on the one day, the Sabbath. And I'm sure uh, you would know by now that uh, in Jewish uh, tradition, the Sabbath is actually on a Saturday. And uh, while we worship on a Sunday, uh, you know, S-U-N, Sun, uh, some people say, you know, it is the S-O-N Sunday, the day where we worship the Son of God. That is actually quite true. Uh, and the reason we, we have come to worship on Sunday is because uh, Jesus died on the Sunday. Um, and to celebrate that, uh, well, not, not to celebrate, but to, but to remember that, uh, we gather on Sunday, and we can also say that it's a S-O-N Sunday. But now, uh, we, you know, we, when we come, we don't want to talk and discuss too much about the Sabbath and whether one, this one day is the holiest of days, and so therefore we, should, we need to keep this very holy and not work or, you know, it's almost kind of like the Jewish tradition of keeping the day holy and not working and so forth. Because uh, in Jewish uh, law teachings, there are 39 things that you are not allowed to do on the Sabbath. And uh, the Jesus and the disciples broke four of them already in today's passage. And so for 10%, you know, just in one episode, one act. And so as Christians, uh, there are two positions that we can take that, you know, we need to keep Sunday as the Sabbath, pure in its holiness and not do any work and try to actually observe those laws or the idea that every day is holy. And I'm not here to talk about and, and add to this discussion. I'm pretty much somewhere in the middle, and I think both are, in a sense, true. The, the, our Sunday is our Sabbath and holy, but every day is actually also holy as well. Now, is Jesus' point and teaching um, that he's the Lord of one day? being the Sabbath. Is that what the core of his teaching is? And if Jesus is really a Lord over your, your Sunday, does that automatically mean that he's the Lord over your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? Now, this is an actual question for us to answer today. And I think uh, that it's a question that summarizes today's teaching for us. Now, whether you believe that Sunday one day is holier than the other days uh, for any reason or not, the question needs to be answered by us. It is not a rhetorical or a theological or just a you know, principal question. And most probably the answer won't be a resounding, confident yes. As in, we do, like the song that I quoted earlier, we do treat Sundays as holy, and then the, the other days, we kind of, we lose track of, of our Bibles. We lose track, we forget the title of the sermon that we listen to on Sunday. There are so many opportunities for, uh, for, opportunities for us every day to either worship Christ or reject Christ in our daily life and daily moment and decision.
And so, without trying to be reverse legalistic, we can com become complacent uh, with our umbrella of salvation. You know, as in, I'm safe, so therefore, now I'm safe, I can do whatever I want. But the idea is that individual moments matter, and we can either accept Christ as the Lord of this day and moment, or not. And we can actually reject Christ, that every choice we make it makes Jesus the Lord of that day, this day, Tuesday, as well as the Sabbath. So I hope I was, uh, I was able to get my message uh, across to you. But is Jesus the Lord of your Sabbath only, or is he the Lord of your Tuesday today as well? And I want that to be on the back of your mind through every decision, every moment even. And make today as holy as any other day, as every Sunday that we need to be before Christ. And I pray that you will exude uh, the holiness of Christ in that way today. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word that reminds us, Lord, that it is not about one day, that really, that it is about our lives and every day of our lives. We want to declare, and we do declare now, that you, Jesus, are the Lord of our every day, that you are Lord over me, over us this very day. And we want to make every decision, every a moment of our lives and our attitude in line with your teaching uh, as your disciples, as your son and your daughter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience.